all-day hikes or backpacking with constantly wet feet has some unique challenges. Let me show you how to get through our River Canyon hike without getting blisters or frozen feet. If you're considering one of the famous canyon hikes like Aravaipa or Oak Creek Canyon in Arizona, the Gila in New Mexico, Perea, Sulphur Creek, Coyote Gulch, or the Zion Narrows in Utah, then you'll want to hang around so you can have happy feet. I moved from Minnesota to Arizona in 2009 and had some experience with hiking in water from my Superior Hiking Trail backpacking trips. But I didn't really learn how to do watery hikes until I began doing canyon hikes in the southwest. My first and most frequent watery canyon hike is Aravaipa Canyon because it's spectacular, only an hour and a half drive away, and I can do it either as a day hike or a three-day backpack. Let me start out by dispelling a couple of obvious questions. First, why not just wear waterproof boots? Even if they are knee-high, you'll get water in them, and because they are waterproof, they don't drain or air dry, so you'll have wet feet for the rest of your trip. Also, they are really heavy and stiff, so your legs will get sore, and your feet will blister. That said, I have worn high waterproof boots for short shore hikes in Alaska, and I do have a pair of lightweight ultra waterproof mid-highs that I use in rainy, snow, or muddy conditions. Second obvious question, why not just wear barefoot sandals? I've done this with zero sandals, but unless you have bulletproof feet, you just won't last. Do wear these with Injinji toe socks if you want to try it. I've also tried Chacos for portaging a canoe in the boundary waters and ended up with my feet rubbed raw. So just wear socks, you say? Grit, dirt, and sand will pass through your socks and make your feet miserable. It's also easy to slip on rocks and lose your balance when wearing sandals. They just don't stay in place as well as laced shoes or boots. So much for things that don't work. Let's have a look at common problems and solutions. When your skin is wet for a long period of time, it gets macerated and prone to blisters. The way to prevent blistering is to wear smooth merino wool socks. Especially in sandy water, grit can grind your skin and cause abrasions. The solution is not to wear water shoes, but something like trail running shoes with gaiters that completely enclose your feet and keep the grit out as much as possible. I like ultra lone peaks, but any trail runner will do. Most people's biggest fear is cold feet, especially in winter. Heavy wool socks will help, but use neoprene socks if needed. You may need to wear a size or two larger shoe, especially if you're going to wear wool socks inside your neoprene. Taking out the inner shoe liner will give you a little extra room. Keeping balance in swift water can be an issue. Use trekking poles, or if you're hiking with friends, pair up with one or two others for support. Trekking poles can also help you probe for deep spots in the river that can be hard to see. If you're hiking in rocky conditions, slipping on the rocks can be dangerous. Make sure you step between rocks and not on them. If you step on a rock, it can roll or your shoes can slip off. Last but not least, walking for a long time in wet shoes and socks is just plain unpleasant for some folks. Good trail runners will drain and dry quickly, and if the water isn't too cold, you can wear lighter weight socks that dry very fast. A couple quick tips to wrap this so up. So one of the things you'll want to learn to do on a river hike like this is cross where it's shallow. So you look for the spot where it's wider, because where it's wider, the water has more room to spread out, as opposed to upstream there, you can see where the creek where the Sulphur Springs River uh, narrows, and up there is not a good place to cross. The, the current will be much faster, and likely the uh, creek bed will be much, much deeper. 
It's normally faster to walk on dry land, especially when going upstream. However, you often have to go out of your way to not walk in the water. Look for long dry stretches or try to cut corners around a bend in the stream. You'll often find worn paths at sharp bends where many others before you have found the best shortcut. I hope this little video helps you with your next water hike. Happy sloshing!